Hey guys, it's Lisa here with Paper Grace Designs and Fabric Castell Design Memory Craft, and I'm here to do another little tutorial for you today, which I'm kind of calling painting with paper crafter crayons. Um, basically, what I'm going to be doing is using a piece of glossy cardstock, and I'm using my paper crafter crayons, which come in a beautiful array of colors. I've got the reds and neutrals here and um, which actually are reds and yellows and neutrals and I'm just going to be layering down a bunch of colors on this piece of glossy cardstock and I'm painting on believe it or not an iron <laughs> now this is just a cheapo iron that I picked up for about 10 bucks um, I would not recommend <laughs> using your regular iron that you use for clothes because it is going to get just a little bit dirty but um, I'm just painting on the iron and then placing it on the glossy cardstock. I'm also using a heat resistant nonstick surface and just a sheet of, you know, copy paper, typing paper. And um, anyway, I'm going to be painting on the iron, placing it on the cardstock, and uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. So I hope you enjoy this little tutorial and um, give it a try yourself. And I'll give you all the details as we go along and then if you have any questions I'll also have it linked on my blog and on the Fabrica Style Design Memory Craft blog. Okay, so here we go. Okay, here we go adding some crayons to the back of the iron to the plate. All I'm really doing is rubbing the paper crafter crayon to the hot plate of the iron now this is a steam iron, so you want to be really, really careful not to go over those little steam holes. Not that I'm going to be using this iron for other than this, but <laughs> you just want, don't want to go over those little holes anyway. Um, you want, I have the iron set on about medium high. Um, you don't want to go up too high, but medium hot is pretty good. You can see right there that um, the crayon did heat up good enough, so it did melt the crayons. And um, I'm just cleaning up after each go, go around to make sure that I'm not cross-contaminating or anything else like that. And that way I'm getting the color as good as I want it. Um, you can use as many colors as you like or as few colors as you like. Just go with the flow and do what you want to do. Um, there's really no science to this. I just decided I wanted to do an entire background. You can use all the colors that you have or as few colors as you have. Um, at some point I used just the tip of the iron after I rubbed the crayon over it just to get in certain select areas, but you can certainly try to cover up the entire glossy cardstock with one color if you want to. Um, I just decided that I was going to try to use as many colors in one family as I looked good to me. This is all personal preference and to try to get as much color down as possible when creating a background. I don't know whether this type of technique can be used on anything other than glossy cardstock. It has been in my best understanding that the best way to use this is with glossy cardstock. If anybody does decide to try it with anything other than glossy cardstock, I'd be interested to find out what your results are. Um, I'd be hesitant to try it with something other than glossy, but um, again, if you do try it, then I would probably try probably a lower heat setting. Um, but again, if you try it, let me know how it turns out. I imagine that something with like maybe a canvas would work. Um, but if you do use a canvas, make sure that it's not something with a, an adhesive back as that might um, pull up the glue. So um, again, if you do try something other than that, please let me know how it turns out. Maybe a watercolor paper might work, although it might work with paper. So I think this is a probably a really good medium for that because it does have a lot of tooth to it does um, provide a nice color show through so anyway when I was checking things out this is what I checked out so it seems to work really well 
when I tried the white um, paper crafter crayon, it didn't seem to work as well as I thought it would. I think next time I try it, I might have to just like pull off a hunk of it and try to melt it that way. It wasn't, didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. Also, when I use the white paper, the copy paper, and go over the top of it to kind of settle in the color a little bit, that black crayon that I just used just lifted off completely. Oh well, those things happen. Here we go. And all I'm doing is making sure the colors settle in. And then I make sure to turn my iron off. Up way too much. So now I'm just going to be stamping up my Donna Downey Lotus Flower Stamp. And I'm just using a Brilliance ink because I can heat set that, I can heat emboss it. So I'm just going to use the Brilliance ink and then heat emboss it with a clear embossing powder. Now I don't get a super, super dark impression from the ink, but that's okay because as long as I can see it, that's fine because I go over it with my Pit Artist pen afterwards and I use the broad nib pen tip so um, even though the ink didn't quite show up the way that I had wanted it to the embossing powder did the trick so I could still see the outline of the stamp and I just went over it with the pit artist pen and that way it was still nice and dark afterwards those pens all of those by Faber Castell are just beautiful. They're India ink and they show up just brilliantly on things like this. Mixed media, they're just fabulous pens to work with. So, need to get some. And now I'm just going to be coloring in my image with some gesso. And that works out fabulously on this painted background because it doesn't move around. So I'm just going to go in on the leaves with a little bit of gesso and that works out beautifully because then on the top of the gesso I'm going to use a little bit of the gelatos. And all I'm going to be doing is going on the base of the leaves with the violet gesso. It's a metallic gesso. And then just blending it in a little bit with the coconut gesso which is the white gesso the gelato. <laughs> So I'm going to be using the Violet Metallic Gelato and then the Coconut Gelato. And those two will blend together really, really well. And also Pistachio Gelato on the stem. So here's our flower all colored in. You can see the violet, and you can see that I used the coconut gelato. I did um, rub some of that gesso off, but I'm okay with that. It just, to me, it just adds to the color. You can see the background through it. It's fine. A lot of people would have an issue with it. I'm not one of them. To me, it just makes it look a little bit more artsy and. You know, I'm not one of those that strives for perfection. It's okay with me. This is a mixed media piece. It looks funky. I'm fine with that. <laughs> it really doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, then you can always go in with more gesso um, or just leave it as it is. Um, the stamp did have little dots on it. I added the little dots back in with the Pit Artist pen. Um, you don't have to put those back in. It's part of the stamp, so I did put those back in. Now I'm just getting ready to stamp up my sentiment. Again, I did the same thing. I used the Brilliance Black Ink and I used um, some clear embossing powder to get a good, good 
make it look nice and deep. And if anything didn't show up right, I would go over back with the Pit Artist pen or my um, Stamper's Big Brush pen. But at this point, we're pretty much getting to the done part of the card. After I get it all nice and stamped up, then I'm just going to use the corner chomper on two corners, add some sequins, put it on a card base, and call it a day. <laughs> So here's our card, all nice and done. We've got our sequins on it. We've got it layered up on a pretty card base. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, it's a little bit different, making a background with paper craft or crayons, but I hope you learned something new. I hope you subscribe to the channel, and I hope you'll stay tuned for more cards and more videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!